So t tell me about Apps Flyer. Um, but what has the history been? I think you're competing in the in a, a quite competitive field of uh, marketing analytics. Maybe uh, you, you can give us a little bit of a history when the company was started, how much money you raised. Yeah. So um, first of all, Marco, I want to thank you uh, personally and for the Israeli startup ecosystem uh, for having Noah in Israel and back in uh, London and Berlin. And you told me that, are you thinking about doing that in uh, Tel Aviv? I told you, tell me when and where I'm going to be there. I'm going to do anything that uh, you need, need me to do. So uh, thank you for having that. Uh, thank you. We, we are fortunate to really have you. And this is, uh, it's amazing. So I really appreciate that. That's uh, to begin with. Um, so I think that the first time I thought about starting the company is when I had my first iPhone, and that was in 2010. Uh, believe it or not, it was really difficult to get an iPhone in Israel back then. It was impossible. You had to sneak it in with your so in your socks somewhere uh, from the U.S. I was in the U.S. I was completing my MBA studies, and the first 48 hours with my iPhone, I thought that this is going to change the world dramatically. Uh, back then, I was... Uh, kind of a believer in BlackBerry. I was a BlackBerry guy, so I was using that. I didn't think that Apple would be able to do something that is better. I was completely wrong. Um, and then I was working for a small VC in the East Coast in Philadelphia, and I saw the app developers and marketers don't have technology to measure. They don't know where the users are coming from. They've been spending millions, tens of millions, and billions in user acquisition and user engagement without really measuring anything. Um, and I thought that this is a very interesting problem to solve. This is what took me back to Israel to start working on the technology to allow app developers to understand where the users are coming from, what is the user acquisition journey, the user acquisition cost, revenue associated with that, and in the end of the day, we are in the value business, and we want to make sure that companies invest their time, effort, and dollars in things that make sense to them. Meaning the most profitable marketing channel. Most profitable marketing channels, cutting off the things that doesn't work. Um, and not only that, we are allowing them to create kind of a money machine with their assets. I mean, think about a digital asset. It's an infinite building. So you can rent it over and over and over again. But you need to have the right platforms and technology to actually go ahead and do that. So this is what we allow our clients to do. How big should I be to become your client? Any size, really. So we serve the largest corporates that you might think of, you know, companies like Tencent and even Google and and, and uh, the Google largest... Google is a customer? I don't know if I'm allowed to say, <laughs> but whatever. It's ways. Um, it is a client. So Walmart and others. Um, so, like, really big organizations and also very small organizations, like startup companies um, in a self-service model. So it's a self-service, but if you are an enterprise client, you probably need something more. And we... Our strategy is to serve all these clients. In the end of the day, the marketing challenges that a small company and a very large organization is almost the same. And um, we want to create a platform and a product that is so addictive. Uh, and if you are a marketing manager, you would like to use the best technology that is out there, whether you're working for Macy's or you're working for a small startup company. So let's talk about two data points. Since you do deal a lot with data, I'm also interested in data. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you. No, anything. Uh, you can ask me anything, actually. Be careful. <laughs> no, I have, I have two questions. Um, one is about the uplift, yeah, which is, I guess, an improvement of the marketing economics. Um, is it that people try to lower their budgets to get the, to the same number of users uh, they acquire? Or do they keep the budgets constant? and can acquire simply more users. So, so if, if, if you have the right measures, um, and I can show you with data, 
um, channels that you can invest one dollar and make two dollars out of it after two weeks or two months. What's you gonna do? You're just gonna spend more, more and more and more money, right? And this is what we enable our clients. And if you compare before your solution or your platform was adopted, is it like a 30% uplift, a 50%? It depends very much on the efficiency of the customer before, they on before you onboard them, right? So before our technology existed, it was basically spray and pray. That's what, uh, what, what Ogilvy said, uh, half of my advertising spend is for nothing, I just don't know what half. Yeah, I don't know which half. Now it's different. Uh, you know that this quote is, uh, I, I checked it yesterday. Yeah. It's uh, almost 100 years old. So somebody else said it. <laughs> somebody else said it. So who said uh, who, I think Ogilvy, the founder of Ogilvy no. Mather, the, so, is now so part of So what I read, it's John... Wanamaker uh -huh. started what is now Macy's. Yeah. It was almost 100 years ago. And I think that we are still working on the technology to allow marketers to measure the true impact of their advertising budgets and marketing. Um, and I think that in 2018, we are still only 1% done in what companies need to measure. and are able to measure. So I believe that we're just at the beginning of what should be measured. W will but you include offline, like television and... Te you know, television is not, no longer offline. Television is becoming digital. If you think about television 10 years from now, let's take 10 years from now. It's not going to be set of box. No one is using set of box. I'm watching television with apps. Yeah. Or, you know, like Roku, Apple TV, all that stuff. Everything is digital. In the, end, in the end of the day, it's digital, it's measurable. And you integrate that advertising already, or is it on your old roadmap? To some extent, yeah, and also broadcast. So we are doing broadcast. It's not as accurate like one-to-one -one if it's on the same device, everything is digital. And it can measure the uplift, or there is an ad for something, and then we can see the engagement within the app, and we can make the correlation. Ah, okay. It's not, it's an estimated thing. But if you think about five years from now, Obviously, everything is going to be measurable, and TV for sure. Okay, so I said two data points. So the uplift, um, I guess, is anywhere 50% to 100% or the economics improvements. Well, if it makes sense, uh, I mean, if, if you are measuring everything, ROI is, is basically, obviously, if it's positive, it's great, yeah? But you're also doing the good thing. The good thing is that you showed a message to your audience and they found value in it. And how do you measure if your audience found value in it if they make a purchase, if they book that hotel, if they buy this item, if, if, if they are using this payment app? So you actually added value to them. And all the other bullshit ads that CPM bases, that is basically asking the question, how many people did we annoy today? And not how many people did we add value to today? You know, when I see batters, I feel always sad for the people because who clicks them now? What's the click ratio? 0.2%? Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. And you know, when I started, when I started, I saw this Luma deck, this huge, like 2000 logos and what is going on here. And then I, I, I really try to understand what's going on here. Who is playing to which interests? And, and, and you optimizing, you optimizing who and which bank account? Are you optimizing the advertiser, the, the supplier? What's going on here? And there was this entire market is with a lot of conflict of interest. And I decided, you know, I'm not coming from this industry. I, know, I don't know marketing. I don't know advertising. But what I do know is interests. So we decided to pick a side and we decided to Build, basically build the best software and platform for advertisers mm -hmm. and to work on their interest and to represent their interest in this ecosystem. And I think that this is the news that we delivered to the market a few years ago. And this is something that, that created a lot of trust between the advertisers and the publishers and companies like Facebook, Google, Twitter, Apple, Snapchat, Pinterest, and all our partners that are reaching 4,000 different partners today. What's your retention, your customer retention? That was the second data point I'm interested. You keep your customers for a long time? Very or? long time. Very, very long time. 
very long time. This is, if, if you think about my mission to my team, is very simple. Make our clients happy with technology and services, mm -hmm. minimize churn, churn is zero. Second thing is get more clients because they really need to use our platform to be successful. So what's your most profitable channel to acquire customers? You must do your best marketing <laughs> analytics. No? You know how it goes. We don't uh, really good in measuring our own <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, I know what you're talking about. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting because when we started to do that for mobile, we kind of assumed that for web it's okay, but it's not okay. The web is still the wild west. There's a lot of measurement issues. Um, and it's some, some things are very difficult to measure. So this is why I'm saying that five years from now, marketing measurement will be very different than it is today. And I hope that uh, we're also going to leverage the technology that will exist five years from now, if you know. Maybe that. last question. Can you talk a little bit about Apps Flyer, how big you are now? Or yeah. is there any numbers you can Yeah, show? so we grow like every year with doubling all the KPIs, or at least doubling all the KPIs in the last couple of years. So you figured out say, uh, sales and marketing as an Israeli company. Do you have some sympathy about some of the comments made here that Israelis are great in setting up companies, developing amazing products? I think products? that the Israelis are great in learning. So mm -hmm. we are good in learning. So uh, for us as a company that providing technology to, market to marketers, we need to have really, really good marketing. Uh, in terms of sales, I think that we are really good at value sell. So we cannot, you know, I'm, now I'm generalizing everybody, but let's talk about me. I'm really good at sales when I'm selling value. If, if I'm not selling value, if it doesn't make sense to you to buy this software, I'm not going to, it's not even interesting for me to pitch it. But if I really know that I can add value to you, that you will be happy with the software, that it can help you be successful. Yes, I'm super excited to start working with you. I really want to start working with you, and I'm really good at sales because, because I'm passionate about right. it. Um, I think that Israelis in general are really good with, the, with technology, really good at learning, and I think that we as a company are doing really good in, 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 in marketing. Uh, sales, it's kind of funny because we just started to build a sales team, uh, global sales team just two years and ago. what's the nationality of who's running it? Well, if it's China, it's Chinese. Ah, so it's like Yair senior. said this morning, you want to use the local people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have uh, 15 offices in 12 countries. 15? Uh, 15 oh, offices. Yeah, you are not uh, updated. So it changes. You know, we double. We double. So, we are now 370 people in the company, 60% uh, in Israel, 200, uh, the rest in global, comp uh, global offices. We let these offices run like a small startups within this b bigger startup. Uh, so if you look at China, Chinese people. We don't have any Israelis, so we don't send Israelis to these offices. We let them run the show over there. They have the mission statement and they have another mission. Let's make the companies that we serve successful. Wow. Well, having the right tools for a startup or a sizable, mature internet company is the way to win. And AppsFlyer, I know because I'm on the board of Badu and we are using your technology and it made a huge, huge, huge difference uh, to our firm. So, Oren, thank you very much uh, for coming to NOAA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.